of tinsel? Do you want to make it look Christmas? No, it's fine. It's Christmassy enough with all the swords. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with my swords? There's way too many of them. This is every sword I own. Well, I am the dagger. Okay, you went a little overboard. Like, this one's not even real. I was really young when I bought that. I didn't know the difference between a wall really hanger young, and a real is it, sword. So, so it is real. It's from the medieval times. You were really young, <laughs> right? That's this one is from like Game of Thrones. No, that's that meme sword, the the one that cuts the pigs oh, in okay. half. Oh, okay, and cuts the meat in the boots. These are this all quality items. This is a dagger. Items. That's not even a sword. It's actually not even a real dagger. I don't think anybody would have carried a dagger like that back then. Yeah. This is a black sword. It's not. It's a. Fantasy sword? It's okay. These are all fantasy swords. No, this one's for when I really need it. <laughs> <laughs> They're useless. They're a waste of money. You take that back. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Night at the Movies. My name is Greg, this is June, and tonight we saw Rogue, Rogue One. One. The world is coming undone. Imperial flags reign across the galaxy. Rogue One serves as more of a spin-off movie than part of the proper trilogy lineup that Star Wars likes to do. Disney wants to make Star Wars its new Marvel Universe. They're going to pump out a new Star Wars movie every year. Skeptic and I actually didn't even know that this movie was coming out this month. No. We were completely unaware. We weren't hyped at all, unlike the no, last we, one. We actually went to see Moana, and we're like, hey, Rogue One comes out next week. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. I was, like, I was like, wait, I swear to God, I've, I saw that it was coming out in 2017. You're like, oh no, that's the other one. So they're just like pooping them out like crazy. Yeah. Again, like the conveyor belt yeah. thing. This is Disney's new thing, and this is what everybody's trying so desperately to copy is to create these, these movie universes. The point of Star Wars Rogue One is not to be part of the proper anthology so much as it answers questions from how we got from episode three to episode four. These aren't necessarily questions that needed to be answered. Like, I don't actually care that these questions get answered. I'm not one of those geeks that needs to know every single detail. But there were some good things and some bad things. Uh, they were going to make a Boba Fett spinoff. And I'm half sad and half happy that they scrapped it. Which is funny because when you found out about it, you were like, oh, no, they're going to ruin Boba Fett. And then they, would, they said they were going to scrap it. You're like, oh, I kind of wish they ruined Boba Fett <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean, Lucas already kind of ruined him in episode two. We'll get to that when we do the uh, prequels. I'm just gonna tell the people what I always thought. I feel like Boba Fett was you back when you wore your helmet. And then when you took off your helmet and started being yourself, I feel like you turned into Han Solo. <laughs> you went from Boba Fett, who was like cool, but like mysterious, and that's why he was cool. Like, oh, what's under there? He's just like a, he's just like a bounty hunter or whatever the fuck And now I'm is. cool because I just let it all hang Now you're out. just an asshole, like smarmy, Douchebag. Yeah, the truth is that. That I want to impregnate me. Cut that out. Oh my god, I Oh my god! That scared the shit out of me. That scared me. Oh my god. It's nice. It's like a little button to let me know when you're nervous. You accidentally twitch. Impregnate me. <laughs> They're still in talks about doing other spin-offs, like a Han Solo spin-off. I don't know that anybody's gonna be able to put the brakes on that train. Again, these I don't need to know these things. I don't want to know these things. That being said though. You want to know these now things. Now that now that we know some of these things, having watched Rogue One, what do you think of Rogue One? So I think Rogue One was ten times better than episode seven. It Mostly because it was its own story, and episode 7 almost felt like it was just episode 3? Is that the right one? The first one? A New Hope? 4. 4? Um, it felt like episode 4, but like with different characters. It was just like, oh, it's the Death Star, but it's a bigger Death Star this time, you guys. So it was kind of like the same. But this one was its whole uh, new thing. 
and I found it very interesting. Although I fell asleep because I was very sleepy today. You fell asleep during the action scenes. Four times I fell asleep and they were deep sleeps too. They weren't just like, oh. I actually had like dreams during a movie and it was the action scenes I was falling asleep at, all like the space battles. I, but then I, I'd wake up every time it was an important part. And I don't know if it's because you were waking me up or I just happened to wake up half at and the half, important I'm parts. Sure. Like every time it was dialogue, I would be like, oh, what? Oh, a movie. But every time it was like space battles, I just was bored. But maybe that's just me. It wasn't boring. I mean, they, were, they looked really cool, but I slept through explosions and war. <laughs> but do you think it was a good movie? It was a very good movie. I have to agree that this movie was much better than episode seven. It was a good movie, and... No, it's my turn to talk now. I just wanted to add one Okay, more tell thing. me one more thing. I was excited after, and I wasn't excited before. And I think that's probably why we liked it more. Our expectations were very low. It was extremely low. I thought it was just gonna be more of the same. When we watched episode seven, you can you can watch our review again if you want, but we were both we both loved it. I especially loved it because what I wanted was for Disney to redeem all of Lucas's mistakes from the prequels, and they did that perfectly. Um, what Disney did is they proved that they can make a better Star Wars movie than George Lucas can. When they immediately announced Rogue One right after Episode Seven was done in theaters, I was like, Oh no, what have I done? I've shilled some corporate assholes that are just gonna poop out all of these Star Wars movies one after another and they're gonna ruin my favorite movie universe. They're gonna oversaturate. Oh no, we're just gonna get more episode sevens, more episode sevens, oh no, oh no. Not only is this not another episode seven, Rogue One is nothing like any other Star Wars movie that has ever been made. This kind of answers my biggest concern I have with movie universes, is that they just, especially with the Marvel universe, they just crap out the same thing over and over and over again. And it's like, it's a beautiful polished turd that is enjoyable and well made and there's like nothing wrong with it but it's boring because it's just the same thing over and over again this is this is different the the tone is darker the stakes seem higher the characters seem more real yeah everything's depressing and dark and it feels like the lowest point mm -hmm. in star wars universe ever i was very very happy that i left the theater feeling depressed and sad because I've never felt that way coming out of a Star Wars movie before. This was like a real movie. A real movie. Rain Wilson tweeted, wait, where's my phone? First Rogue One review. It was actually amazing. Super fun and exciting. Ties in with episode four perfectly. Rain Wilson, you are a dumb, stupid asshole. <laughs> this movie was not fun and exciting, it was depressing and sad and scary and real. It felt real. As much as I love Star Wars, none of the, I never for a second feel like anything that's happening is in any way real. It's very much feels like a fantasy to me. This movie like puts you in their shoes. Unlike a lot of um, Star Wars, I feel like it's just a like, fun fantasy you're just watching. You like Space really, adventure. Yeah, you really, like really feel for the characters on the screen this time, especially at the end, oh my God, but we'll get into that. It was depressing. It was a depressing Star Wars movie. I was like, what is this? Plus the Empire feels like a real threat. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's like run terrorists. it's run by all psychopaths. Darth Vader, uh, General Tar or, uh, Governor Tarkin, and then that whatever that general guy was. The all three of them were having like psychopath offs with each mm -hmm. other. Every time the Death Star shows up and every time uh, the Empire like extends its arm out to things like you feel like these Everybody's oppressed by them. Like that one town, the first town we go to that's on top of that plateau, you can tell everybody on that plateau is depressed and sad and that they're being oppressed by a big, powerful, crazy galactic government. No, Nobody's happy, nobody's happy in this movie. I really like how they kind of show you what it's like for the people on the planets that are getting destroyed by the Death Star, because we see the Death Star destroying things in Episode Seven. They're destroying different planets. Yes, the Star Killer Base, whatever that was called. Yeah, that's not a Death Star. Well, 
you see like planets being destroyed. Yeah, you see entire solar systems get destroyed by. But it. on in this movie, you see what it's like to be on the planet once it's getting destroyed. You see the Death Star's power. Well, they they don't destroy a planet in this one they because they didn't want to ruin the con continuity in. Episode four, the first one, when uh, Governor Tarkin blows up Alderaan, he's like, oh, it's a perfect planet to test. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's the first time they've ever blown up a whole planet. In this mo movie, they only use the Death Star to destroy like smaller things like cities and stuff. But oh, you, you do, see the you see it happen firsthand yeah. from the ground. And yeah, it makes it feel much more it's real. scary. Well, that's a thing they couldn't have done in the 70s. They couldn't have shown like a, a wall of like tectonic plates yeah, yeah. flying That's at you. True. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you when you talk. Can you be trusted without your shackles? Let's just get this over with, shall we? We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. We need to know how to destroy it. So the director was Gareth Edwards. He did the American Godzilla movie. He does like monster flicks. Uh -uh. They clearly didn't call him on to just make another Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. If you just want to remake a thing that already exists, you call J.J. Abrams mm -hmm. because he's like really like kind of autistic about it. He's good at recreating things. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say autistic. No. I shouldn't say autistic. He can kind of get a feel for a, a universe that already exists and then just make a new one of that. This was like a brand new project, a brand new tone. Um, the, the editing was very different. The camera angles were very different. It was like very like real and in your face and like you felt, you felt like you were there. Even the shaky cam was like very appropriately used. In the beginning, I was kind of like, oh, I'm not sure about this movie because the scene changes were weird. Did you notice that? They were like, oh, we're on this planet, then we're on this planet, now we're on this planet. That actually we're on happens this for the whole first act. I, I find like, that the, every scene was very, very short. Ever, you, you get like two or three yeah. lines between Something characters. Something would happen. And then it would cut to a new scene. I agree with that. That was, that was a little bit off putting at the beginning. I was like, oh no, is this going to be bad and I'm going to have to hear him rage all they, the way home? They calm that down though after the first act. After after you start to learn who everybody is, after you learn where all the locations are, they they fucking right in the bottom corner of the screen. Yeah, what the we're location here, we're is. We're here. We're here. We're here. Which I was like, which I uh. hated. It felt very Godzilla-ish. Mm -hmm. I hated it. But then I was kind of glad that they did that because I didn't because how quickly the the first act went. They they kind of do have to spell it out to you. Because they wanted to establish it very quick, it yeah. seemed like, so they can get to the juicy parts. And they were like, oh, this happened, this happened here, and that happened here, and that planet's this. And I was fearing that would be the whole movie, but it honestly it's stopped. Because it's because the, the first half of the first act is just introducing you to where everything is, who everybody is. Because what they want to do is show you the main story, and the main story is... <clears throat> Um, uh, yeah, um, it's about J Jin? I thought her name was Jen. J-Y-N. Jin. Jin. I feel kind of bad, but I don't remember the names of any of the new any characters. characters. Okay, they were all very good characters, yeah. most of them. Some of them yeah. were kind of like disposable. In a way, yeah. Well, no, rare. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree um, with that. But, but I don't remember any of their names. I just remember their races. <laughs> right? right. Okay, so there was the woman. There was the like Southern Francish, Northern I Spanish. He was Spanish, like Spain. I, I thought he was from like Southern France, but maybe he was Spanish. The blind Chinaman. Blind. There was the fat Ghostbuster Chinaman. Uh, then there was there was the Middle Eastern. the Middle Eastern Indianish like Southeast Asian pilot guy? I kept getting him mixed up. Can we put pictures up? With the Spanish guy? Him and the Spanish guy. No, they had I didn't. The exact I didn't. That's look. why they had him wearing the goggles the whole movie. Exact so you'd know who look. was who. Both of them. Same beard, almost the same noses and face shape. Like you couldn't find someone that looked a little different. Then there's the new droid. He was, um, 
He was my favorite. Okay, I'm never gonna remember this droid's name. K. 2SO. They called him K2. He was the only comic relief in the movie, essentially. Which is kind of rare. He was played by Alan Tudyk, who was uh, one of the supporting cast. He supported um, Adam Baldwin in Firefly, the main character of Firefly. He was the pilot of the Firefly ship. He's kind of like a poor man's Simon Pegg. It's not that he's a bad comedian. I just feel like they could have gotten somebody better, but I think he handled the role really well. His character was funny. He was my favorite character. For some reason, I was just continuously reminded who was voiced, who voiced him. That's more my fault than it is the movie's fault, I think. He was definitely my favorite character because his like comedic timing was really well done. And meanwhile, everyone was kind of serious around him. I like, I liked all of the new cast. I don't know if I could say who my favorite was. I wouldn't say any of them were so good that I'll ever want any of their merch. I'll never want a poster with their face on it. Jin, the uh, the main character. So when we're first introduced to her, she's a young child. And that's, that's the whole switching from scene to scene to scene thing really quickly. When we meet her, she's essentially a prisoner. And all we know is that she's like a badass who has without a cause. A rebel without a cause. She didn't really have a personality, did she? Um, she was just kind of strong um, and like. She was strong calloused. willed. She was strong willed, calloused, independent, kind of like your modern feminist woman type, which um, I wouldn't say doesn't work for the movie because she they do eventually flesh her out once she they her character arc essentially is that she starts off not giving a fuck about anything as she uh, learns that her father's still alive and as she learns um, that, you know, just how terrible the Empire is and that she can actually help rebel against them. She starts to like regain her humanity and then in the end actually is feels compelled to do something about it. Yeah, because remember that one line where someone's like, you don't care about any of this? Like, you don't look up and see they're taking over and she's like, you don't see it if you always look down or something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Like, she didn't care. And the other main character, the, the supporting actor, is the Spanish-y guy, the rebel that's like in charge of her, I guess, on the mission that they're on together. And he has an interesting arc too. He starts off as an asshole and you hate him. He kills people, nice people, people that he has no business killing. He's even sent to kill Jin's dad and in the movie this is played off like it's a terrible thing and we're supposed to feel bad about it. Once they start talking about okay we need to disband the rebellion because the Death Star exists, all of a sudden he's like no we can't disband the rebellion. I've done all these horrible horrible things and if it if it turns out it was for nothing I'll never be able to live with myself. And then, it, and then he also joins Jin in this, in this, you know, they both feel compelled to do something about it in the end. You can talk also. Maybe it was because I was falling asleep a lot, but I didn't get a lot of their personality. Any of them? No, the runtime felt a bit short for us to really get to know everybody. They kind of just felt like cookie cutter characters a bit. The adventure was fun, but for some reason, like, Jin's story was cool and touching and kind of like epic and the adventure was really cool and like the whole concept was really cool. Sorry, I keep using the same adjective. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, yes. Intriguing. You're going through a dictionary in your mind. <laughs> it's thesaurus. <laughs> if you had a dictionary, you'd know what, the, what that meant. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, the character development was weak, to me at least. For who? Every, all the Oh, no, it was, it was base level. Like, um, th this movie's not gonna win an Oscar. N none of the actors are gonna win Oscars. The director's not gonna win an Oscar. The writers aren't gonna win Oscars. The, they Which are- they all. <laughs> yeah, nothing's, no, nobody's winning, a, nobody's winning an Oscar for Star Wars Rogue One 2016. I kind of want to just say, I'm happy at least that every character had a character and that they all had an arc. Even Forrest Whitaker, who's only in the first act of the movie, has an arc. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, what we know about him is that he's kind of like guardian to Jin. Mm -hmm. And then when we do the fast forward, all of a sudden he's like a crazy recluse. And 
he's like cut all ties with the rebellion even though he's still a rebellion member and it's really complicated and then in the end he ends up remembering who he uh, was and why he does what he does and then the, i guess the last main supporting character would be the pilot what he is is um an imperial freight pilot his job is essentially he flies a freighter ship and he defects to the rebellion and gives them the information about a little bit of information about the Death Star. What was his arc? I don't know. Did he have one? I don't know. What was his character? I don't know. He barely talked. I think he had like ten lines. He seemed in like the a movie. lovely gentleman. <laughs> he had like ten <laughs> lines in the movie, right? The thing is, he was a very likable guy. But I would say that he was the exact same person for the entire movie. You thought he was going to be another Han Solo, but... He well, didn't. the way he described himself oh, yeah. in the preview for the movie, uh, before the movie started, he said, he's not really a member of the Rebellion, and he's not really a member of the Empire. He's just a, a freight pilot yeah. that got caught up in everything. And I was like, well, that sounds exactly what happened to Han Solo. But he's not. he was nothing like Han Solo. He was a nice character. I liked him, but... Honestly, the characters are the biggest problem I had. Yeah, they felt like they felt like they were the last thing that the creators of the movie thought about was who these characters are going to be inside the movie. They thought about the story and then they were just like, oh, like throw a bunch of people and uh, make them diverse. There you go. Speaking of diversity, the two most obvious were the two Chinamen. I thought them being Chinese was cool though because they were kind of ninja-y. Do you know why they were Chinese though? Why? About a third of all movie profits come from the East. You think that's why? About 90% of that money that comes from the East comes from China. And what happened was when episode seven came out, they did this huge ad campaign in China. Didn't they put the robots the biggest on the the poster? Even the posters, yeah. The black guy was so small yeah. in the poster. <laughs> because China had never really been exposed to Star Wars before, there wasn't like a Star Wars culture over there. They were trying to get China really excited about sep episode seven, and they didn't really make nearly as much money from China as they thought they would. It was a little bit of a flop. So what they did was they put two literal Chinese actors mm -hmm. in the movie, and they almost felt like they were in a different movie. It wasn't like so stark that like it felt like they didn't belong. Like they definitely belonged in the in the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. They definitely belonged in the movie, but it, it almost felt like that there was a completely different director just for those two characters. The blind Chinese guy, don't know his name. I don't even know if he's Chinese, he's just Asian. He was, I think my second favorite character just because of that one line he has when they're putting bags over everybody's heads and he's already blind and he's like, oh, come on. I got a couple chuckles out of him, yeah. I liked the fact that he was blind and he was just like... <laughs> it's no surprise if you've seen the trailer. This isn't really a spoiler. If you've seen the trailer, the guy is blind and he kicks ass. He's able to, to down a couple dozen stormtroopers completely by himself. He's obviously a Jedi. The other guy was almost like pl plucked out of a video game he, he had was like so a, heavy. Yeah, he had a giant like energy pack on his back, and he's <laughs> covered in armor, like which looks sort of like stormtrooper armor. Yeah. I'm gonna sound a little bit like a nerd here, but it felt like it came right out of the Knights of the Old Republic online role playing game. It literally looked like he was a video game character, and he had like some super OP gun that could, like that could shoot like, super fast. And it was so heavy too. Every time he shot... Remember all those black stormtroopers that are in the poster? There's six of them in the movie. He's the only one that kills any of them. China. So like what? Chinese audiences don't care about the story. This is, I'm not like, I'm not being racist here. What marketing has noticed is that they respond more to action scenes and big robots, explosions and spaceships and stuff. They don't respond to like character development and story and stuff like that. And I feel like that might, may be part of the reason why Disney is kind of streamlining the character part and is like focusing more on like big 
picture stuff. Like it's a good theory. But a lot of like nice indie films come from China and stuff that have big stories. And Actually, one of the highest grossing movies of the year came from China, and they haven't even shown it here yet. Um, it's called The Mermaid. I feel like people might get offended. They'll be like, hey, Chinese people have great film, blah, 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 blah. I'm not talking about um, <laughs> the film culture there. I'm talking about the way marketers um, view um, the way Chinese audiences respond to things. The reason the Transformers movies keep getting dumber and dumber is because the Chinese audiences, they're not reading subtitles. They don't care about the subtitles. They're just watching robots fight. That's all they're there to see. If you're really doing this, I want to help. Good. Good. I've been recruiting for the rebellion for a long time. We destroyed our home. I fight the empire now. I fear nothing. All is as the force wills it. So we have to talk about up, the up, returning up. cast. So we'll start with the good one, I guess, is Darth Vader. Oh, okay. So James Earl Jones reprises his role mm -hmm. as Darth Vader. The man's getting a bit old, so... A little rusty. His, his voice isn't as James Earl Jonesy as it used to be. I mean, it was still, you could tell it was Vader. Not to go too nerdy here, but they modeled the Vader costume off of the episode four, New Hope. It even had like the bronze coppery lenses that you can sort of see through. But Vader's in what, three scenes? And they, it's, it's mostly just fan service. It feels like, it feels like he's just in the movie so that they could sell Darth Vader merchandise. Except for that last scene he's in was my favorite scene of That's, the entire movie. Actually, I might even go as far as to say that that last scene with Vader is now my favorite Vader action scene. It was terrifying. It was legitimately okay, so terrifying. There's people I, banging okay. on glass. Help right, so, us, help let's... us as Vader's mowing down guys, <laughs> lifting it's them up, the smashing them around. the scariest scene I've ever seen in Star Wars in my life. It was actually like was something like out of a horror movie. He was like... <laughs> it definitely feels like they wanted to go for something more real, more deep, more scary, more Get like, you in the gripping. feels. That scene was... Okay, 100, 100, 100. That's legitimately the scariest Darth Vader scene oh my God. of the entire anthology. He essentially serves as a trump card to the main villain who's... <coughs> um... <clears throat> uh, uh, Orson Krennic? He was pretty good. He was a good villain. He was a good villain. Full on psychopath. Yeah. No redeeming qualities, which is kind of a bad thing. It's kind of the easy way out with the villain. People like a villain that you can relate to and you can understand why they're evil. This guy was just a psychopath. Yeah, he was just a complete psycho. This is nothing like a Darth Vader where, where like he's kind of a tragic character. Or who, Kylo. Or he's like a good villain. Yeah, like Kylo, where it's like a villain with like depth to him that you can s relate to on some level and like get invested in no you just this guy's just a psychopath evil evil that's it when governor tarkin takes over the death star from him he goes and bitches to vader about it and vader's like no you're just gonna do what i tell you to do and that's it when darth vader showed up i felt the nerd radiating <laughs> off of him like I didn't even want to turn around because I knew I was going to see the cutest thing in the world. And I just like peeked over and just the dimps. You were like, well, so I don't want to. I don't want to spoil his reveal, but the reveal is pretty neat. It's it pretty so neat. Cute. You nerded out a few times. It's hard for me to review Star Wars movies. I know, like when I did Episode Seven, a lot of you pointed out that I threw out the book and was fanboying over it. Like, I apologize. I was just very excited about it. And the same way, I was excited about a lot of the stuff that was in this movie, but I was trying so hard to compartmentalize that from my actually reviewing the movie for whether or not it was a good movie. Let's get into, um... I know what you're gonna say. Let's get into some, one of the, the probably the worst part of the entire movie. <sighs> 
For some reason, they featured him super heavily. Governor Tarkin, instead of recasting him because the actor's fucking dead, they went full BoJack Horseman and just put in a full CGI rendition of him. And he looked more like an alien than any of the fucking aliens that were in the movie. We both turned to each other and just cracked up when we saw him. But it, w it took a little while for it to like register in our minds. We were looking at the screen and then we both went. Yeah, June looked over at me and I, f I was like sinking you in were, the like, chair. Triggered. I was triggered. It was upsetting. It was I, it was genuinely I was like, upsetting. Something was uncanny about this and like the way his mouth was moving, his eyes were like I was like, that is not a person. Yeah, he had fucking googly eyes. His mouth moved independent of his jaw. Yeah. For some reason, he's like center frame zoomed in several times. Many times. That is, why would you do that? Because they have to be like, oh look, this is before everything. So look, there's the character that was there. This movie didn't fall into the same fan service trap that episode seven did, where 90% of the movie is fan service. This, they did a little bit of fan service as like peppering so that people remember that they're watching Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, like R2-D2 and uh, C-3PO. Yeah, they're in up. one shot as, t as yeah. X-Wings are flying away. I'm glad they're not in any of the rest of the movie. Episode seven, was more nostalgia for people like you. Yeah, fan service. Yeah, the, but Rogue One was more like its own story. That's why I liked it better. I think I said this actually, we, we try not to talk to each other when we're coming out of the theater because if we do, we, we forget to say things to each other during the review. We have review. to save the rants. I'm saying this as a compliment to the director and to the movie as a whole. During the entire second act of the movie, I forgot I was watching a Star Wars movie because it was like genuinely a good standalone movie. Mm -hmm. If I didn't know anything about the Star Wars universe and I had just watched this, I would have been very satisfied with this movie. It's a very cool movie. I would have wondered why the characters weren't fleshed out more. The rest of the um, returning cast, they did tastefully. Um, some of the, the X-Wing pilots from episode four, it looked like they re-showed some of the original real footage of oh, them really? from the Death Star run in A New Hope. And they did some CGI of some of the, the uh, old ones and they like made them look younger than they did in episode four. They didn't need to do that though, mm -hmm. um, at all actually. It didn't really make much sense that they did. I guess other than to say that, oh, it's Gold Leader. Why isn't Gold Leader the same guy? Disney, honestly, we're going to understand if you recast somebody who died 30 years ago, it's fine. Recast them, we'll understand. Stop Bojack Horsemaning your fucking movies and put real people in those roles. CGI is not where it needs to be to put on full CGI people. Unless literally everything else in the movie is CGI as well because it sticks out like a sore thumb it was blatantly obvious that Governor Tarkin was not a real person and was not really there. It was so creepy. It was creepy. The rest were fine because it was like quick clips. Mm -hmm. It was like, gold leader here. I didn't know that was an old character until you went. And I was like, oh. Times. There's a few times. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a returning one. <laughs> oh, that means it's from an old yeah, movie. There's a few times I caught myself doing that. I was like. I know. And I was like, oh wait, she doesn't know. Okay. Nobody knows. So we got advanced seats though. One thing I was a little bit surprised at was that the theater wasn't full. I didn't expect every seat to be taken, but it wasn't even half full. You're because an optimist. I'm, because, well, it's because episode seven, when they did advanced seating in my theater, I couldn't even get tickets. Probably because like no one knew this movie existed. <laughs> when episode seven came out, everybody noticed there was a little something wrong with the intro. And I think everybody pinned it down to the fact that there wasn't the Fox fanfare. The dun, da, 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 da. This time, not only did they not have that, but they didn't have the title crawl. Well, I'm glad they didn't. I noticed that too. I was waiting for it. They had it in a galaxy far away, and then I was like, here it comes, here it comes, and it never came. They did what I do on my main channel. They did a cold start, and then they had the intro. Yeah. That was Two a really intros. interesting choice. There wasn't a lot of excitement. I think. 
the only show that was um, in our theater before the one that we went to was actually just getting out as we were waiting in line to get in. And only two people came out like dressed in costume. No, 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 no. Be honest. Is it obvious? No, don't. I try to wear loose pants. You're not putting this on the video. Stop talking to the camera. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the special effects at all? The special effects were solid, right? They're I good. mean, they were good. Like movies today, it's like it's, it was just basic movie special effects. They didn't put special effects anywhere that I didn't expect them to, other than the returning cast. Oh, oh I wanted to talk about the, the Stormtroopers. This isn't so much m movie review as so much as it is um, nitpicky, nerdy Star Wars fan. There was something a little off with the Stormtroopers, and I think after watching the movie, I have it figured out. What? One thing about the old 70s Stormtroopers is that all the helmets the the molds were handcrafted, so they're a little asymmetrical. One side's like a little bit more bulged out, one side's a little bit higher up. The eyes aren't even, even like if you have a helmet, the helmet doesn't even sit right on your head. They probably used computers to mold these new ones. They were perfectly symmetrical, perfectly weighted, they looked practical, they sit right on all the actors' heads, the costumes were perfectly symmetrical. Even the actors that were in the Stormtrooper costumes looked like fit and like bulky. Not like tall, but like they looked like fit, like soldiers. They looked like a soldier would. They didn't really act like soldiers. Like they'd sit like this and they'd be like, ah, what the fuck's going on? I don't know, some shit, I don't know. And then like even like when they conversed with each other, one guy was like, hey, did you hear the news? And then another guy replied, yeah, the old T-15s are obsolete now. It's like, that's... How, how, how would that be a conversation? Also, when the stormtroopers died, every single one of them did the same thing. They whipped their head to the side and fell. Every single one went, <laughs> whoop, and fell. Even though they were getting, like, shot in the chest. I didn't even notice that. There was also strange choices with the rebel troopers. They weren't wearing, like, the regular rebel trooper uniform, it looked like it was the regular cast of old marines that is like in every movie. There's one bald, bulky guy. There's one guy with a big beard. I see these guys like in every movie that has like old marines yeah. in it. I think some of these guys were even in fucking Jurassic World. Yeah. Fact check that for me. Get your fact checkers on that. <laughs> The uniforms they wore just like look looked like U.S. Marine yeah. uniforms. Like they didn't they didn't look like they belonged in the Star Wars universe at all. They looked like they were going America. Fuck, fuck yeah. yeah! As we were waiting in line to get into the theater, we were having this conversation. I was like half happy that I was in line to see a new Star Wars movie. Online. That's a, a Long Island thing. Long Islanders don't say they're waiting in line. They're waiting online. online. On it. You're but the line June. of people and you're on the line but of people. But June, there's no line that you're on. The yes, line it is a line of people. No, you're the line on is the people. You're in the line of people. No. I was half happy that I was in line waiting to see a new Star Wars movie. But I was also mourning the death of old cinema. It's all so corporate now. It's so stale and it doesn't feel like art anymore. It, it feels like somebody typed in different characteristics of what works in a movie mm -hmm. into an idea machine and the idea machine is like make generic female character lead. Make sure there's space battles or giant robots. Animals that sing. Oh my god. That's another thing is that of the 10 highest grossing movies of 2016, half of them at least were about talking animals. This new movie that they're pushing coming out is about animals singing. And it's like, it's literally the fact that they're animals doesn't seem to factor into the story at all. It's just like a singing competition. Okay, do a singing competition. Cool, but why you pig? Remember in that preview we saw, like somebody coming out of the theater is like, oh, it's a great movie. Halfway through, I forgot that they were animals. They just seem like people. Because they are people. The, the, 
Why are they animals? It doesn't matter that they're animals. It's like the friendly dinosaur. Oh. Why were they farmers? Okay, okay. June. We're gonna move on from Why this. were they farmers? I don't know. I don't like to think about it. But I think part of the reason that I like this movie so much is because this was something new. It was, it was kind of like more of the same, but it, somebody did new ideas with it. Somebody took it in a new direction. Somebody made an artistic expression with it. And it kind of reminded me of Empire Strikes Back a little bit, where somebody took an existing universe that somebody else created and made a story out of it. I'm not saying this is as good as Empire, it's not. It's not, it's better than seven. Oh, what about three? It's better than six. I mean six. I wouldn't even go as far as to say this even on par with four and five. What about the prequels? I was just happy that, that the studio allowed him to make something that was a little bit different. Within the confines of the robotic corporate statistics driven idea machine movie universe that we're now in. The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. Thanks. There isn't much time. Every day they grow stronger. So what didn't we like about the movie? The beginning with all the cut to different planets. This is here, this is here, this is here. I didn't like that. It, it um, felt like a disaster movie. Yeah. Like it Los felt, Angeles, New York. It felt like a Godzilla movie. The not so fleshed out characters. Like we pointed out, I don't even think that the pilot had a fucking arc. And he was like the third main character. He was just there. The CGI people. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Disney, it's okay to cast new actors. We don't need CGI Governor Tarkin. We'll understand if you recast him. Um. Jimmy Schmidt was in the fucking movie. That was interesting. If only just to show that Jimmy Schmidt is still alive and part of the rebellion. That's, Re that's Leia's dad. Oh. Um. Stop, stop stroking my finger. Oh, oops. <laughs> Suggestive, June. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. We're just used to touching each other, mm -hmm. I think. So... I'll touch your cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> and... The ending. The ending should have ended literally a minute beforehand. I don't want to spoil it too much, so we're gonna go into spoilers here. We're gonna start talking about the story a little bit, and we'll talk about why why I didn't like the ending. What happened with Jin was that she was a I don't give a fuck person. Then all of a sudden she discovers her dad's still alive. She sees him face to face and he dies in her arms. And that is what drives her to join the rebellion and and actually do, do something about it for once. Believable enough. It seemed too quick. It, it was It was confusing to me that they gave her a seat at the table and that she was like the one doing most of the talking. And then when she burst out and was like, I'm done with this and left, that was somehow the end of the meeting. They didn't establish in any way that she was that, that important like, a person. Bitch, who the fuck she's, even she's are She literally you? was essentially a hostage to the rebellion. But I believed enough that seeing her dad die and finding out that her dad was actually against the Death Star. Finally, in the final f fight scene, when they end up getting the plans out to the Rebellion of how to destroy the Death Star, and the Death Star drops out of hyperspace, and you see it in the clouds, mm -hmm. and that's so, it's just ominous. You only see like half of it, the way Scary. you would see the moon rising above the horizon during the daytime. It's beautiful shot, looks gorgeous, looks scary as fuck. The ship that gets the plans, the one that, that uh, is at the beginning of episode four, Darth Vader um, tries to board the ship. And that's that crazy fight scene where he's like choke, choke grabbing with the force people and throwing them around and cutting them around and he like steals all their guns and just slices them down. And there's people running away, people banging on the glass. So help us, help us. Like genuine scary fear. fear. Yeah. I felt genuine fear. The rebel ship gets away at the last minute. They end up breaking away from the ship that's holding them. And Darth Vader is standing in open space with 
the vacuum of space sucking all the air out behind him. You see his cape flowing and he's holding his lightsaber and he's watching the ship fly away. The camera slowly zooms into his face. And we wanted the movie and then to... And it cut to another scene. And I was like, no! That was perfect. That was perfect. I thought the movie was going to end right was, there. And I would have been like... If that, if the movie had ended there, I swear to fuck, I would have given this a 10 out of 10. Uh -huh. I would have given it a pass on all of its mistakes and said, that was the most epic movie I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. But no, they needed to show one more scene of... CGI Bojack Horseman Princess Leia getting the plans and going, Oh, good. This will be good. And then it ends. Oh, we got hope for the future. And that's the end. It, no! Just that, <laughs> just that, just that little scene ruined the ending. It could have just ended right at Darth Vader's face, but it didn't. Oh. Disney's ruining my Star no. Wars. I know. It's okay. June? <laughs> Is there still gonna be a Christmas? There's gonna be. <laughs> So who should see this movie then? Everyone. You don't even have to be a fan of Star Wars because it was just a good movie. To a certain degree it was made for the fans. There's a decent amount of fan service in this. It's not fan service heavy like episode 7. I agree that I don't think you need to see any other Star Wars movie to get something out of this movie. I would say if anything, this movie explains why the original trilogy is so important. Why it's the stakes are so high in the original trilogy. This is as good a launching point to get into Star Wars as any other Star Wars movie. How would you rate it though? <sighs> I wish the characters were better. I wish the ending ended at the good part. Mm -hmm. 7.5 out of 10. The characters are a very important part. The weak, and they the, just... Yeah, the weak characters and the fact that the third highest build character didn't even have an arc is a little disappointing. I'd say that they at least lose to two points just for the characters. They ended it with the CGI Leia and they had CGI fucking General Tarkin so heavily featured in the movie. Like, he's in so many scenes. I'd say that they probably lose another point at least for that. I have to give it a seven. I would say that it deserves a 6.5, but I'm giving it a seven because it's tickled my Star Wars bone the right way. I'll tickle your Star Wars bone. Wanna go do that right now? Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw and you'd like to see more Armored Media, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you absolutely love me, you can support me on Patreon, or if you have a passing affection for me, you can buy my t-shirt. Links in the description. Your dick is huge. Hide it. Put a Santa hat on it. I don't ha I, I found these tiny Santa hats that would have covered most of my dick. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so we saw Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody. We saw Rogue One. The, Merry Christmas. That could, the, <laughs> that could be the intro. You take that back. Never. Fuck <laughs> They're useless. They're a waste of money. And you are degenerate for buying things that are <laughs> that things that you enjoy. You are wasting your money. I am very concerned at you. <laughs> Get it on the alt right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
covered in armor. Like, there was just, there was just. Sorry, somebody's dying outside of us. <laughs> We're busy. We're busy. God, our life is so hard. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yes, honey, Christmas is still happening. Oh, my hair is so floofy. It's going to be Christmas. Put your Santa hat on. Put your hat on. Christmas is here. You want to hold Chewy? No, I don't want to hold <laughs> Chewy. I don't want to hold want Chewy. Chewy. Yeah, I won't hold yeah. Chewy. Okay. Who should see this movie? People who like Star Wars. This movie was made for the fans to a certain degree. Oh, wait. Can I start over? <coughs> We need to add anything else. Um, I'm just gonna record a um, little bit about little bits. Little bits. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! It's little kids. Little bits. Look at these little buggers. <laughs> little bits. <laughs> you know, a little turkey, a little cookie. Little bits. It's for people with big heads and little small, little tiny heads. Little God, we're over tired. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to sleep. <laughs> Bye.